I don't know, honestly. I've uh, I've tried to figure it out because I don't like it. I only puked in the toilet once and the trash can once. Why do I put my body through this and what is making my body feel so nauseous? And so now it's become a joke. Like if I don't puke, I'm not winning the race. Anybody, if you raced any race in the world that you really had on your bucket list, that would be the Baja 1000. You know, it's just the biggest race that everyone's ever talked about. We just want it. I'd say for the last month I wake up and I start thinking about the race and it makes me nauseous. Why do I put myself through this? Hey. Maybe give me a ring when you're getting close. Okay. All right, so yeah. This is the race that we've talked about forever. You know, this is the race that my dad raced. I need one of these in each chase truck. That one shelf is like missing bolts out of it. I'm a Phil Blurton, factory Can-Am racer, and uh, we're gearing up to race the Baja 1000. My typical morning, I come in here and pull up the race map and check it out before I get my day started. Typically at night, I've thought some new ideas and come back in and look at the course and double check them. Being fortunate enough to win a lot of races in the States, down there, it's like a, it's a whole new challenge for me. This is like a once in a lifetime opportunity. That'd be everything. You know, with Phil, I would have to say it's pretty amazing. And him and Bo, I think, there's a magical thing going on there. Good morning, Bo. I guess the back, the back of the car is done. I guess you could start putting front A arms on it. We've had quite a bit of success. I mean, I think our very first race, we were the first Can-Am to come across the finish line, and that was Can-Am's first year with the new X3 platform. Yeah, they've won some races. I, I can't remember them all because there's been enough to where I can't remember them all. And I, my memory's not what it used to be. My library's pretty full. You know, for the first few years, I don't know why, but everybody just thought these guys are a fluke, you know? And, back when I raced, I saw different levels of people's commitments. And I was looking, you know, there's some people that go there to have fun, some people go there to race, and then some of the guys go there to win. How many times is his truck gonna see the car? Yeah, like eight. Let's just take these ones that are over here then, put those four on each chase truck. Kevin is a huge part of our race program. He helps organize all the pits and put the logistics together with me. Both chase trucks are going to have a pre-runner, so you're going to have nine tires, really. Pretty much 27 pit crew members and 27 tires, and hopefully only use uh, four of them. Then you're not gambling. Yeah, he's got a pretty full plate. He's, he works pretty much seven days a week. It's been a roller coaster of, do we build race cars? Do we go straight production parts? The hardest part is that every part that we build, we want it to be race quality. So it's like, I, I feel like I have to have my hands on everything involved in here. Phil and maybe three other people that are racing today in SCORE and Best in the Desert that can actually design, build, and drive. He's constantly on the computer, on the CAD, designing stuff. Everything I do in life is like a math equation. I run like my whole entire life, like mathematically. I, I think a lot of it has to do with that, like as soon as I'm done with the race, I'm critiquing myself on how I built the car and I just want to make the car faster for the next one. Yeah, he's a pretty chill dude. He's super humble, super humble guy. I mean, you know, he's, he's embarrassed. Now, you know, at the races, little kids will come up, can I have your autograph? He's always, God damn, why would anybody want my autograph, you know? Like I said a bunch of times, you know, Phil's just like calm. He's not like a showboat guy. I mean, you wouldn't even know he's got all this stuff unless you like know him personally. I, we haven't built a customer car in a month and a half because we've been, I've been so driven to win this race that I'll, I'll close everything down to make this race happen. So Capri, what do you think about how long I'm gonna be gone for? I think it means a lot to him. This is definitely on his bucket list of things. Think, you think if we win the thousand, we should go back to Disneyland again? No, go to Lego Florida? Land. Legoland. Yeah. Well, Legoland. we could go to Legoland because that's on the way back from the thousand. That's in San Diego. He sometimes does beat himself up a little bit of being away from the family. All right, I better win now. But ultimately, he knows it's creating a future for all of us, and that's why he continues to race. Good morning, Phil. Morning. Very excited. You know. It's, it's really kind of cool that Phil's first Baja 1000 is going to be the full peninsula run and not a big loop. Well, there it is. I believe you guys used to race these things in Mexico. 
I think the last time I raced this at the thousand was in uh, '85. Uh, I was. It must have been in the mid '80s, and I was racing the Mickey Thompson World Championship. And my wife had Phil one week before that race. Yeah, this was a handful. This thing I've been clocked at 100 miles an hour in Mexico. She came out with that little boy. He's six, seven days old, and so that was his first race he ever went to was he was a week old. I think one of the cool things about this car, having the Rotax motor in there with centrifugal clutches, which you know a lot of us do this now, and there wasn't anything like this then. A lot of great memories, and I'll tell you what, I'm so proud that now you're 944, and this is my number 44, and it makes me very proud that my son yeah. adopted that number. For surely, I think this race is super important to Can-Am, and we're gonna do our best to, to win this race for them. I think we, we've won a lot of races, so from a lot of people, it's like expected for us to try to be on the top of the podium. We've raced with the same hood between all the cars this whole entire year. It ended up that way, so we're just we're gonna finish out the year with the same hood. Right now, uh, me and my buddy Austin Whalen are battling for points. He's got a one point lead on me. Whoever beats each other, we're gonna get rookie of the year in score. No, no pressure, like a, like a one point gap on the championship race. Honestly, I don't even care. I just want to win the Baja 1000. When I race best in the desert, I want to, I'm going for a championship, everything. This race, I just want to win the Baja 1000. This is the race that everybody, you, you say you race off-road, they say you race the Baja 1000. We've never done it, and we finally have the opportunity to. So, no, I haven't accomplished everything I set out for yet. No, we only have an 18-hour day today. What could go wrong? Things are constantly evolving. I say it's not even a race, it's more of an adventure for us. Oh, for sure, it's stressful, yeah. I but just when I say boy. no, it's no. You're, if you're not nervous, you're, uh, you're not showing up to win.